Ranger Bill, warrior of the woodland, struggling against extreme odds, traveling dangerous trails, fighting the many enemies of nature. This is the job of the guardian of the forest, Ranger Bill. Pouring rain, freezing cold, blistering heat, snow, floods, bears, rattlesnakes, mountain lions. Yes, all this in exchange for the satisfaction and pride of a job well done. Sometimes young people make mistakes, and one big mistake is that of getting in with the wrong crowd. This is the story of young George Bruce. It's a story of how George made a very serious mistake and was sent away for a while to think about it. And when he came back to Naughty Pine, the good folk there didn't think they should let George forget that he's been away to reform school. It's also a story of how Ranger Bill tried to help young George make the grade, and then got in the middle of what looked like a double cross. But let's go back a couple of months and look inside the office of the principal of the reform school. He's talking to young George Bruce. Now, George, you're going back out into the outside world to try to live a normal life again. Yes, sir. You got to try hard, my boy. It isn't going to be easy. Too many folks know about you, and uh, they don't forget. Yes, I know. You know, society is very quick to call for punishment on the heads of those who make mistakes. But sometimes they're slow in offering a helping hand to those who've paid for their mistake. Well, I'll try my best to make the grade, sir. I don't want to come back here, ever. <laughs> That's the spirit. I don't want you to come back, either. This is one place where I don't extend a return invitation. Well... Goodbye, George. Goodbye, sir. And thanks for helping me. <laughs> That's quite all right, son. Keep your chin up and look them square in the eye. You've nothing to be ashamed of. You advertise for an office boy here, mister? Uh, why, yes. Come in. We'll talk it over. What's your name, son? George Bruce, sir. Oh, yes. Uh, you uh, were in the papers, weren't you? I'm sorry, but uh, we can't use you right now. Maybe some other time. I see. All right. Thanks anyway. Say, mister, you advertise for a gas station assistant? Yep. Want the job? Yes, sir. Yeah, you look like a strong, intelligent lad. Not afraid of work, are you? Oh, no, sir. All right. When can you start? Right now, if you want me to. Okay with me. Grab a rag and get them coveralls on over there. Sure, right away, mister. Or say, uh, what's your name? My name's George. George what? Did you have a last name? Yes, it's Bruce. George Bruce, eh? Oh, uh -huh, say, you, you ain't the kid that just got out of reform school, are you? Yes, sir, I am. Oh, I'm sorry, boy, no job. Bad for business to have you around here. Got to think of a business. Bill, you know who I am, don't you? Sure, you're Wayne Bruce, uh, George Bruce's dad. You sure got a head for remembering. Well, I uh, guess I've got a head, all right. <laughs> Place to hang my hat, anyway. Uh, can I help you, Wayne? Yes, Bill, you, you can. It's, it's about George. He, well, he's not doing so good. Can't get a job, is that it, Wayne? That's right, Bill. Nobody will give the boy a break. Trouble is, they'll be sending him back to reform school if he doesn't get work pretty soon. You know, people are cruel, Bill. Just downright cruel. Yes, Wayne, a lot of people are. But may make you feel better to know that I want to help the lad make a clean new start in life. Now you tell George I want to see him tomorrow afternoon. And not to worry about getting a job. Oh, Bill, you're a real friend. I won't forget this, believe me. 
Not in your life. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. Hey, Bill, wait up, will you? Sure thing. What do you want, Cal? Where you been keeping yourself, boy? Haven't seen you for a coon's age. <laughs> the question is mutual. I guess the sheriff leads a busy life just like the rangers, eh? <laughs> boy, you're not joking. Right now I'm checking on the Bruce lad. See if he's behaving himself. George Bruce? Hmm. You needn't worry about George. The boy hasn't been able to find work yet, but that won't be for long. I'm going to talk to a friend of mine about giving the fella a job. Ugh, wasting your time, Bill. Once these kids turn bad, they stay bad. I've seen it happen too often. Yeah, maybe you have, Cal. The thing is, I never see anybody giving these fellas a hand. Oh, well, we all make mistakes. Some make worse mistakes than others, that's all. They need help to get on their feet. But nobody wants to help. Them. Now, look, Bill, you take it from me. I know about these things. The sheriff, I've seen a lot of them come out of reform school, and they always go back. Only when they do, they go to prison instead. We'll see that this doesn't happen to George, Cal. Take it easy on the kid and give him his chance to make good, will you? Oh, sure. Sure I will, Bill. Well, got to run along. <laughs> Same here. Uh, drop around the office when you get time. Yeah, first chance I get, Bill. So long. So long, Cal. And uh, don't believe the worst about George. We'll see if we can make him an exception to the rule. Hello, Frenchie. How you doing, big fella? <laughs> oh, Bill, my friend. It is so good to see you. That's yeah, good to see you, too, Frenchie. How you doing? Still cutting them down to your size? Oh, Frenchy, <laughs> he always swings the odds. Uh, what you say, uh, the bigger they are, the harder they fall. <laughs> <laughs> say, oh, by the way, uh, you come up on the social visit or business? Well, uh, a little of each. Mostly business, Frenchy. And uh, what kind of business you want with Frenchy? You buy timber? No, Frenchy, uh, I want to build some. Hey, uh, what you mean, Bill? Frenchy, uh, there's a young friend of mine. His name is George Bruce. George got into a little trouble a while back. He made a mistake, but he's paid for it. Now he's trying to start over again. Only the folks in town won't give him a break. He uh, just uh, get out of reform school? Yes, a couple of months ago. And he hasn't been able to land a job yet. How about it, Frenchy? You give this boy a break, I'll vouch for him. Oh, you no need vouch for him, Bill. Frenchy, remember when he not so hot himself some time ago now. Bring the young fella around. Frenchy, do so give him job and give him good name again. Thanks, Frenchy. You're an understanding man. If the world had more people in it like you, it would be a lot happier place to live in. I'll bring the boy up in the morning. How do you feel about this, George? Great. I sure owe you a lot, Bill. And you won't be sorry. I'll make good. I know you will. Frenchie will see to that. Now, I don't want you to be afraid of Frenchie. He's a big bulk of a man, a French-Canadian, but he's got a heart as big as his body. He'll understand. You see, George, Frenchie's made some mistakes, too. You mean that, Bill? Yeah. And he's made good especially since he became a Christian. Oh? He's the top foreman of this big lumbering outfit. He's doing very well. So you see, young fella, it can be done. Sure it can, Bill. If they'll only give a fella a chance. That's right. They'll only do that little thing. Let's see. We'll be at the camp in about ten minutes. <laughs> Hi, 
I'm glad Bill helped young George Bruce. It makes big difference, all right. Yeah. The way these people in town act, they'd just as soon send him back to reform school. Uh, Tom, uh, we ought to send some of them pumpkin heads off the clink. Maybe they wouldn't be so snooty when they got out. Well, some of these eggheads here in town ought to be glad it ain't raining. What's rain got to do with it, Stumpy? Why, they'd all drown because they got their noses turned up so high. <laughs> Old timer, I think you've got something there. <laughs> well, thank you, Gray Wolf. Them's mighty kind words. Hey, Bill should be back soon. We'd better pack up. You know, he says we're going out on the trail for a couple of weeks. Yep. We're going to look for a big diamondback rattler for the zoo. They need one, you know. The old one died. Now, I've got a feeling that I shouldn't ask this question. I can kind of tell by the look in Stumpy's eye. <laughs> you might as well ask it, because he'll tell us anyhow. <laughs> yeah, that's right. He can't take a hint. Okay, Stumpy, tell me how the old rattler died. Well, sir, <laughs> he got caught in the front door of the snake house. Thought he was a doorbell and buzzed himself to death. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> hey, hey, just a minute. Hey, listen. I think I hear the boss man driving up out front. Oh, good. Now we find out how young George made out on his first day on new job. Hi, Bill. Hello, fellas. How's Trent? What's the good news about George, Bill? Well, it's all good, I'm happy to say. He's doing fine. Even better than I expected. Great. Yes, sir, it sure is. Just shows that if you have faith in human beings, they won't let you down. That is, the Lord's guiding them. You say, George, uh, maybe you like to run the errand for Frenchy, eh? Huh? Well, sure, Frenchy. Anything you say. <laughs> that is a good boy. Look, uh, I want you to take the ton and a half truck into town. Uh, drop the saw at the freight depot. I send it back for repairs. Anything else you want me to do? <laughs> More work, eh? Um, we, you can do something else. Uh, go over to the bank and pick up the payroll on your way back. You mean me? You trust me with the payroll, Frenchy? No, oh, you tell Frenchy why not. The Frenchy trusts you. The big boss, he trusts you. You bring the payroll back, huh? Oh, sure, Frenchy, sure. Is there much money? $2,500 in the manila envelope. Whew, that's a lot of money. Maybe I should have protection. Maybe you'll like to take the Camp Muscat along, huh? Well, sure, I'll take Blackie along. That's a good idea. Here, Blackie. Come on, boy. Here, boy. Well, go now. I'll show you a buck before the dark. Okay, Frenchy. Come on, Blackie. We're going for a ride. <laughs> Here's Lumberjack's payroll, young fella. $2,500. Wow, that's a lot of money, isn't it? That's right. Now, I'll put the money in this heavy manila envelope and seal it, okay? There you are. Well, thanks. I'm all set. Let's go, Blackie. <laughs> Pretty bad downgrades going back to camp, Blackie, old fella. I sure hope the brakes in this truck are okay. Well, we ought to be back to camp in about half an hour. Say, I'd better slow up for that turn. Hey, this isn't funny. Say, what's wrong? I can't slow down. The brakes. Here, I'll try the emergency. <laughs> Blackie, we'll never make that turn down there. We'll go off the road, sure. Come here, pup. You can't go out through the windshield. Hold it. We're going to crash. Ranger Tom calling headquarters. Tom calling headquarters. 
Come in, headquarters. Over. Come in, Tom. Bill to Tom. Come in, old boy. I'm flying the copter along the Lumberjacks Highway, and right now I'm looking at a ton and a half truck. Crashed into some trees on a curve. Better take a look, Bill. Right. We'll be on our way at once. Any sign of life? No, not a sign. There's a truck up ahead, Bill. Yeah, that looks like one of Frenchie's trucks. Hey, I wonder who was driving it. We'll know in a minute. His brakes must have give out. Nobody in his right mind come barreling down here that fast to clip. Here's the driver. Why, it's George. Get a crowbar out of the truck, Stumpy, and we'll pry this door open and get him to the hospital. How are you feeling now, George? Oh, pretty good, Bill. Kind of trembly. The doc says you just got bruised up a bit. Nothing serious. Sure thankful for that. You had close call, George. Well, you said it, Gray Wolf. Boy, I sure was scared when I found out the brakes wouldn't hold. Cal, what brings you here? Checking up on the accident? No, Bill. Something much more serious. Huh? What's the matter? What's wrong? Only this, Bill. My theory's proved itself right again. These reform school kids are no good. Now, just a minute, Cal. We've been friends a long time, but let me tell you... No, Bill. You let me tell you. You know there's a $2,500 payroll missing from the truck this kid was driving? Huh? No. You heard me. George, is this true? I don't know. I forgot about the payroll... It was in the truck when I crashed. That's all I can remember until I woke up here in the hospital. But I didn't take it. Please believe me, I didn't take the payroll. Honest, I didn't. I don't do things like that anymore. Yeah, yeah, sure. That's what they all say when they're caught in a trap. Cal, are you sure the payroll's missing? Absolutely sure. And George Bruce, just as soon as the doctor releases you, I'm locking you up. You're under arrest for robbery. <laughs> Right, fellas. Now let's get out and search the whole area around the smashed truck. We've got to find that money. Or that kid's had it if we don't. Yeah. Hey, this is going to take some looking, young feller. There must be a thousand places that money could be. And every nook and cranny's been gone over already. Not true. A manila envelope shouldn't be hard to find this time of year. Let's work out from around the truck into an ever-widening circle. Search for about 200 yards around. I don't know, Bill. It looks like money isn't here. I've got to make sure. Let's start all over again. Okay, Bill, you're the doctor, but... We looked pretty carefully the first time. Yes, Tom, I realize that. The one place we didn't look on the first search may be just the place where we'll find it. Yeah, you could be right. Why are you all low down, Sunwine and Polecat, trying to fight me with you? Hey, Stumpy's in trouble. Let's go. Stumpy, what matter? What you shoot? I shot this here sidewinded copperhead. Trying to use my hand for a pincushion, ornery critter. Look at the size of that copperhead. You don't see them that big usually. I'll say not. You were fortunate, Stumpy. They don't give any warning before they strike. Our body coloring perfect for this time of year. Yeah. Well, this one will have to get along without his head for the rest of his life. Come on, fellas. One more careful search, and then we'll head back to town. I want to go over to the jail and have another talk with George. (laughs) 
George, you're sure you're telling the truth? You wouldn't let me down, would you? Please believe me, Bill. I didn't take the money, and I don't have the slightest idea where it is. I guess you didn't find it either, did you? No, young fellow, we didn't. We didn't leave a stone, stick, rock, or log unturned. I'm certain now that the money's gone. Well, it looks pretty bad, doesn't it? Yes, George, I'm afraid it does look bad for you. All the evidence points one way. And the worst fact of it all is that only you and Frenchy and the paying teller knew you had the money. Oh, if only I hadn't been knocked unconscious. Yeah. Well, there's only one thing you can count on. Well, what's that? I believe you. And I won't rest until I find out where that money went. Say, did you hear the story that's going around town about Bill Jefferson backing up the Bruce kid as being innocent in this lumberjack payroll robbery? Yeah. <laughs> I think that ranger's crazy. He'll only get himself in bad trying to defend that boy. Hello, Bill. Hi, Ed. How's the banker these days? Well, I'm fine. But I can tell you of one ranger that's not doing so hot. Huh? What do you mean? I mean this, Bill. You're way off base with the Bruce boy. He's guilty, Bill. And if you're wise, you'll drop the whole business before you get yourself in bad with the folks in town. Thanks for the advice, Ed. I believe the lad's innocent. I aim to prove it. Uh, how are you going to do that? Right now, I don't know. But I'm going to do it, and I will. <laughs> You know something, fellers? I'm just a mite bit worried about Bill. I think he's jumped on the wrong wild horse this time, and he's liable to get thrown. Mm, I think maybe you're right, Stumpy. Now, wait a minute. Bill's never wrong about one thing, and, and that's his judgment of human nature. No, that's right. But, uh, young feller, a man has to be wrong sometime in his life, and I'm beginning to believe this is it. I'm afraid Stumpy right, Tom. After all, look how carefully we searched the area of crash and found nothing. George says he was knocked out all time until we got there. He could be stalling behind good excuse like that. No, I don't agree with you. There's some other answer to this whole thing. An easy answer, maybe. But where it is, I don't know. I don't either, Tom. But I'm going to find it. <laughs> now, Bill. Bill. Hey, how'd you get in here, Bill? I didn't hear the door open, and I ain't deep yet. I reckon you heard what we said. Yes, fellas. I can't say that I blame you very much. Only I'm sorry you don't have more faith in George. Well, I hope we're wrong, Bill. But it's beginning to look like George took the money. Hey! Carl, what's the matter? What's the matter? Look at this newspaper and you'll see what's the matter. Huh? Great Scott. Look at those headlines. They're really out to get me, aren't they? Well, you're the whole front page. Everybody wants to know what's wrong with Ranger Bill Jefferson. This proves it, fellas. Proves what, Bill? We've got to find that missing money. And remember, in this country, a man's innocent until he's been proved guilty. I don't want to make you keep going over and over this story, George. It's no more pleasant for me than it is for you. Sure, I know, Bill. You're trying to help me. Now, think hard. What little detail have you missed that might trip the answer for us? Um, start from the beginning. Well, let's see. Frenchie told me to go to town, and I called Blackie, and we got in the huh? truck. Blackie? And... Who's Blackie? You never mentioned anyone else in the truck besides yourself. There wasn't. Blackie is the lumberjack's mascot dog. Oh, that's it. That's the clue we've been waiting for. You mean the dog might have something to do with it? Well, it's possible. But how would he... I don't know, George. I don't know anything. But I'm going to find out. 
I'm going to the lumber camp right now and have a talk with Frenchie's boss. You've got a lot of nerve, Bill. You and my big-hearted foreman. Why, if he wasn't so essential to my operation, I'd fire him right now. Not only have you been responsible for the loss of my payroll, but you want me to take part in some crazy harebrained stunt. Uh, well, are you through ranting and raving now, Jim? Oh, I'm sorry. What are friends for unless they understand one another, huh? You haven't hurt my feelings just because you let off some steam. I'm glad you did let it off in front of me because I understand how you feel. You really mean that, don't you? Yes, I do. Then that rates you my cooperation. Let's get the dog and make the test. Wonderful. Now, you say the dog is taking messages back and forth from time to time. Then this has got to work. Now, here's a manila envelope. Just like the one the bank teller put the money in. Okay, let's go. You get the idea, don't you, Jim? Just take the dog to the scene of the crash, put the envelope in his mouth, and see where he goes. Mm -hmm. If you want it that way. Sounds crazy to me. Here, Blackie. You got it? Add up, boy. Great Scott, Bill. You may be right. He's heading right for the camp. What'd I tell you? But we still haven't got the money. Just be patient for ten more minutes. I think we'll have the answer to that one. Let's get in the car. Well, here we are, Jim. Bill, I can't believe it's that simple. Well, maybe not. Here's a kennel right over here. Blackie. Give me that envelope, Blackie. Come on, boy. Add up, boy. Thank you. Well, there's one envelope, Jim. Ah, uh, that's the one we just gave him. It's empty. Yeah, I know. Blackie, the other envelope. Come on, boy. Bring it out here. Come on, boy. Add up, boy. Well, Jim, there we are. The lost payroll. Bill, that's wonderful. Oh, the most beautiful $2,500 you ever saw. Jim, there's something more wonderful than that. The reputation of an honest boy. you're free. And let me be the first to apologize for being a stubborn fool. It's all right, Sheriff. You were only doing your job, I guess. Come along, son. Let's go home. Sure, Dad. But just a minute, please. Uh, all right, son. Bill, I want to thank you for all you've done for me. You've proved to me that it pays to be honest and straightforward. You've shown me that the truth always wins out in the end. can't always believe the facts, can you, boys and girls? That is, not unless you're absolutely certain you have all the facts. Because one missing fact can throw the whole truth out of balance. We'll see you next week for more adventure with... Ranger Bill! <laughs>